Welcome my digital friends. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bow and arrow in 3ds Max. Without further ado, let's go! After you get your 3ds Max open up, we're going to come on down here to Customize, Unit Setup, and just make sure it is under US Standard Feet with fractional inches about 1 over 64 and then hit OK. Under create we're going to go over to geometry and grab a plane and throw it in here at the front view. You can just throw these down to 1 as this is going to be for reference photos. We don't need all those segments. Now we can hit Alt W with this window selected to full screen it into view. Then from here where it says wireframe we're just going to hit default shading so we can see the full picture. Now for the next part, you can either hit M or come up here to the button that says material editor. It'll pop up a second screen. You're going to select one of these, come to diffuse, hit none. Under maps in general, you're going to hit bitmap and hit OK. Now you're going to want to locate your photo. So I have mine under images for tutorials and I'm going to click on this bow that I found off of the internet. You're going to want to click and drag right onto the plane you just created. You're going to notice that it is gray, but do not worry. We're going to hit this button here that says show shaded material in viewport. And that will allow us to see the image. Go ahead and close this up. We're going to come on down to modify and we're just going to change this up just a little, just a better fit photo. With your image selected, we're going to come on down to hierarchy. Make sure it is selected. We're going to right click on the X, Y, and Z plane. This will move the image right down to the center. Another option you can do is hit effect pivot only, which will change the gears. And we'll just move this down right about here. After you move it to where you want, go ahead and deselect that. After you deselect this, go ahead and under the Z that has the numbers in it, go ahead and right click that and that will move it right back up there. Then we're going to right click, hit objects property, click on freeze. And if this is checked, make sure you uncheck it to show frozen and gray, which will allow you to no longer accidentally select this. Now we're going to come on down to create shapes and hit line. Come on down to rendering. We're just going to hit this button that says able in viewport. This is just going to help you see the line as it's being placed. So we are going to start clicking and follow the movement of the bow. Once you either got into the middle or even to the end, depending on which you wanted to do, go ahead and right click to exit out of that. Now, once you finish your line, you're going to come on down to create, to go to shapes, and we're going to go to cylinder. We're going to Alt W out of here and in the left view here, I'm just going to make a cylinder shape right here. We'll adjust the sizing and everything in a minute. So go ahead and hit W to kind of exit out of that creation mode. Come to modify. We're going to change this height segment to 15 and our sides to 6. You can always adjust how many sides you have later on. From here, we're going to hit this modify list. Come on down to path deform and we're going to hit pick path and click on that line you created. As you notice, the shape has changed, but we can fix that by hitting move to path. As you can see, it now follows that line. It's a little short, so let's come back down to cylinder. Make sure this is checked or else you will not see what it looks like. And we will just increase this a bit. And as you can see, we can't exactly see the shape of our reference. Go into our material editor again, come to a new one, and we'll just come into diffuse and select a color here and come down to opacity and I'll put 35. Go ahead and drag and click onto your shape. Exit out of that and we can now see our reference photo underneath. So let's go ahead and reduce this radius a bit just to get a bit closer to the actual size. Now one thing we are going to want to do is come down to the path deform binding, right click and hit collapse to. A little warning will pop up, just hit yes. Now it's going to turn into an edible mesh, but I'm just going to turn it into an edible poly. That is just my preference. Now one of the reasons we collapsed it is because we wouldn't have been able to move this at all or even adjust. So just this allows us to work on it without any weird deformations based on the shape. 
the one thing we're going to do is just kind of all W out of there real quick and just move this out just so we can have a better look at it. Back into our front view, we're just going to change this default shading to edged face. This will allow us to see the edges. Now, as you can see in the picture, we have a bit of bumps here and here and kind of here too. So we're going to actually do that. But you may be wondering, this is only half the bow. After you turn it into edge faces, we're just going to come on down to effect pivot only here real quick. And we are going to move this right about here. And there is a reason for that in a second. Come down to modify, modify your list and scroll down until you find symmetry. Normally the default is exactly what you need here. And as you see, it has copied it onto the other side. Maybe it look a little off, but we'll just make sure this is there. Click your vertex and you're going to select these. Hit R or even hit the scale button. And on the X axis, just move it until it is all straight. And now it is looks like one piece. From here, we're going to select our edges. We're going to double click around this corner. We are going to hit E for rotate and rotate this around and then use W to move it about here. Do the same over here, kind of rotate it around. And as you see, there is a little weird deform here. Go ahead and select all those there. We're going to scroll down to connect. You can either hit connect or the little box. The box will allow you to add as many segments as you want, but we just need one. So go ahead and add that and just add an extra curve and rotate it a bit. Okay, one thing we're going to do is we're going to come on down over here. We'll just move this piece down a little bit here and we'll select this area. Again, we're going to hit connect and just move pieces here. Maybe rotate that a little bit. We are just moving the pieces to better fit the picture. Now we're going to come on to polygon. We're going to select this area, hold down alt and click this off. As you can see, there's something still selected, which is a tiny piece there we don't need. So just go ahead and delete that. After we delete that one piece, we're just going to come here real quick and we are going to select this. You can also just select one piece and hit ring and it wraps around it. And we're just going to hit connect with the setting and slide this down about here. Now come on down to polygon, select all these pieces up to that little point and we are going to extrude. As you can see that's probably not what you want, but don't worry. Just hit this to go to normal. You can even hit the arrow and select local normal. It may look a bit big, so just go ahead and shrink this down. Once you get to the size you want, go ahead and hit OK. And we are going to, it's a little harder to see there, but we'll just come on down to our perspective view and double click around this outer line. Come back into your front view just kind of move it a bit and then just shrink it just a bit down. We're adding a bit of shape into our creation. Now we're just going to do the same thing over here. So we'll go ahead and do here. Let's just hit that. Do two and we'll just hit this to zero and then we'll do the pinch. Move those away. So like, more like this. And then you can select all that. And then here's another thing you can do. You can go to bevel. Again, make sure you're on local. And it'll most likely be huge again. Just shrink that down and then you can move this and this eliminates the fact of us coming in and selecting those lines individually. But we can also go back into those and easily select them and just turn those a bit if we wanted to or even make them bigger. Really the choice is yours. One thing we want to do is come on down to this view again. Come back to your material editor. Just turn this up real quick and move this to the side. And as you can see, there's no lines here. We can easily fix that because having all those on one poly is is not a good idea. Just scroll down under vertices and hit cut. Right click this three. Make sure vertice is the only thing selected. Click this and then we're just going to select those two. Right click the exit out and now that is better. Go ahead and exit out of that. Go ahead and change this back to 35 or whatever form you had it in. And we are just going to do one final thing while in vertice. We're going to come on down into our top view and we are going to select all these. Now this is going to be everything that was not extruded and we are going to scale this Remember, scale is R. To scale this out of it, because if you look at reference photos of bows and arrows, they are not perfectly round. And go ahead and do the same thing. Head and hold down shift as you're clicking.
clicking it to select multiples and just move that just a little bit. We don't want it too much. I think on this side, a little more. I'm going to show you what it does. Let's go ahead and turn this up. And now it is more of a squared like piece. This is more along of what a shape would be for the bow. Now you probably notice this weird little line here. So go ahead and go back to modify. Scroll down until you hit smooth and you're just going to hit one and that will automatically smooth and get rid of that weird line. But one thing you're going to do here is get that cylinder and just name your item to bow. Come on down to create and we're just going to make a box and we're going to come to the left view here and we'll just make a general shape and extrude that out of it and we are going to move it on over here. Now the height is is what's going to increase the length so width you probably can't tell from this view but if you look on the top view here it shrinks down and since this is string we really don't need it that big so we'll just go to here and we're just going to increase that height a bit and one thing we're going to do is add some height segments we'll do like six from the modifier list we can come on down to edit poly or edit mesh or whatever you want and hit vertex we're going to select all these and just move these up a bit and kind of follow your pattern there select those two and you can just put those down a bit just kind of hide those edges into the mesh itself once you kind of mess with that the string for your bow go ahead and select your bow once you've finished with your string go ahead and select your poly of your bow we're going to hit geometry for all hit attach from list and with that box we're going to select that and hit attach and now that box is part of our bow which means when we move this around it goes with it it's now considered one piece we're not going to worry about any texturing but if you want to do multicolors we're just going to come on down to poly come to your front view so we're going to select do control click select all these pieces we kind of extruded just make sure you have controls held down as you do this and if you accidentally select them you don't want just hit alt and close that we're going to scroll on down here we'll change yeah we'll leave that at three select other colors here the other parts again if you don't want a certain piece just go ahead and alt click those out and our id will just change that to a one one last time to the string and we'll change that to a two it may seem like a little strange right now but i'll show you material editor let's come on down to a new one i'm going to select this come down to standard material general and multi sub object and hit ok Let's go ahead and keep that. We're going to set the number to three because we have three different colors. We're going to drag and click each one and just do a copy. So for one, it should be the brown and we'll just do brown color. Two should be the string, just make kind of yellowish. And then three should be the handles. We'll just do a little bit of a darker color here, not pure black, and drag and click onto there. And now this is colored to help give you an idea of where you want everything to be at. Very quick and easy. Now one last thing, this looks like a pretty nice basic bow, but we need an arrow. So go back to your front view and create a plane. Go to your material editor, select a new one, and add a photo of your arrow. Following the same steps as before. Again, I just grabbed this one off of the internet. We're just going to come down to object setting, go and gray, freeze it, and OK so we don't accidentally select that. So we're going to add a cylinder, much like before. It's definitely going to be a bit smaller. Come down to modify, and you can just change that to one because this is straight and we don't need all of those. Go ahead and change the height to about there. Round this out. Six should be good. Come on down to edit poly, and we're just going to grab middle piece here. Use Z to zoom, and then we're going to extrude this just a little and bevel this out. Come on down to here and you can increase sizing with that as well so we can get that there. Come back to poly. We're going to go onto this side and extrude that out just a bit. Same thing. Now we're not going to go too fancy. I just need this as a reference so you guys can see. We're going to bevel this out a lot smaller like so and again just pull it up like that. We're going to come over hit plane and we are going to copy that down. Something you can do is just throw that in there. Your 35, and if it seems like it disappears, just click those out. It's just too close to the picture. That's all. So we're going to, we'll just add like three swift segments. Come on down to edit poly and we'll select the one down here. Move it like that. And we are really just adjusting this to follow the picture. 
Really, you can move these. So we'll move that here and move down. Something we can do is hit mirror, add an instant, and we are going to do the Y axis and move this down about the same here. Hit OK. And the thing about an arrow, there are three feathers. So we're going to select one more. Come down to here to snap toggle. Hold down shift and we are going to rotate this 90 degrees. It's going to be instance. Hit OK. And just to show you, here it is up here. And then we just align it like so. Increase this back up real quick and you can see it has bows there. We can actually do our edit volley, attach from list, and let the plane and attach them. We'll do a box for the arrow. About here, to there, and move this down. Do mini segment. We're just going to start off at one. We'll add the color, change this down to 35. Anything with that will also turn invisible. We're going to come on down to the edge loops, hit connect, make sure there's one line there. As you see, it's not quite lined with ours, but we're just going to use this as a reference. So we will move it like so. Control, click with these, and, and we can use Y to kind of straighten this out a bit. So that, good there. Just to show you what it looks like, and hit Z to kind of zoom in. You can see it's very square and flat. One thing we can do to fix is ring that around, add a line there. And one thing we can do, we can add another line to that and straighten that out. We're going to come move this around and where it is poking out a bit. We'll grab those and do the same thing. And if you have our time, go ahead, cruise this back up. And we are going to select those three and use the Z axis to kind of bring those out more. Z select those four and get out more. And you can also bring these in more. The one thing you're going to notice this is way too fat for an arrow. Well, we're just going to send this out a bit and now it's more like an arrow. Go ahead and attach that into it. Go ahead and call this arrow. Go ahead and change all those in materials with the poly to each ID. Open up your material editor, go to standard, and again multi sub object. And again, we'll just hit a three and do the same thing as before. Just remember what colors you do for each one. And here you go. Here is a simple bow and arrow, and you can use this technique to help you get your general shapes and you can do more complex bows. I hope you all enjoyed this little quick tutorial. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content. I'll be making more tutorials on more 3D objects, art, and gaming. So until next time, stay connected, my digital friends.